Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Welcome! to the Moonbeam City After Show, live on AfterBuzz TV. I am your host, the Internet's Soapbox Mark. Uh, Greg Goodness cannot be with us tonight. Uh, he's in a little bit of duress. He had uh, some flight issues. He will be back next week. So today I am holding down the fort for tonight's episode, Quest for Aquatica. A little bit of the nightclub band plan, getting them in as soon as they're finished up with their current tour. Don't you worry. We're going to have these sweet, sultry sounds in the studio. Uh, so for tonight's episode, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a character update. Uh, we got a lot of advancement when it comes to Dazzle, how he operates, and how he works with others, and how he kind of doesn't like how to do his job. There, there are some people who say, uh, if you do a job you love, uh, you'll never work a day in your life. And the thing is, he loves being a cop so much that he will do anything and add anything into the mix of being a cop just to make it a little bit more interesting and just to stay happy. And you know what? You gotta admire that. And Rob Lowe with the wheel, constantly making Dazzle seem like the the most intelligent fool you've ever heard. Uh, tonight we've got Zach Wilson on the ones and twos, a wonderful friend of the show. Tonight he watched the show with me and uh, was utterly surprised at the sheer madness that he saw. Zach, did you have any uh, first first uh, ideas of what this show is compared to what you thought it would be? I mean, what did I see? I saw a dolphin penis. I heard a bizarre... Uh, version of Africa by Toto? Yep, that sounds I, about I right. Think, uh, mm -hmm. I I keep coming back to... I saw a man uh, put his himself in front of his daughter and show her how she was conceived. I don't know what I saw. I'm My brain is reeling. Well, uh, this is par for the course when it comes to Moonbeam City, and if you are new to the show and new to the after show, you ain't seen nothing, uh, ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, so so let's start at the beginning. Uh, it's Dazzle's birthday, and what better way to spend his birthday than uh, make, making shot shots, filling his gun with vodka, and shooting people in the face. Uh, we did meet a new character today. We met Chrysalis's father, Blade H. Tate. He, voiced by Patrick Warburton, the incomparable Patrick Warburton, who seemed to have had a wonderful time with this role, as he does with any real silly role. And we learn that he's not quite all there. Too much time at sea, maybe a little bit too much sun on the deck. Uh, says uh, a little too much. Chrysalis kind of wants to keep him uh, safe, much to his chagrin. Uh, Pizzazz, the ever-vigilant and stalwart police chief that she is, tries to get Daz to get, uh, join into CPR training. 15 minutes, it's super simple. You learn the, the staying alive, it's the Bee Gees, why not? Uh, he just can't do it. He's dreaming of the sea. And here we get the main crux of the episode, which is uh, Daz falling in love with the sea. Anytime somebody suggests that something might be cool or awesome, it completely takes over Dazzle's psyche, and it just, e even on his birthday, he will do anything to, to, to th have some semblance of happiness, quote-unquote happiness, as long as he can disguise it under the realm of police work. He ends up at a crime scene on the ocean, cut and dry case, Rad is already there, it was a suicide, she left a note and everything, Daz pops the body back into the water uh, just so that he can take a submarine down. He designs a, a dolphin suit uh, with a HUD similar to Jarvis, if you're a fan of the Marvel movies, and he fall, falls in love with a dolphin that he names Splasha. And here, here was one of the parts where Dazzle's delusions kind of went a little bit farther than a standard 
kind of a joke. He he always had some sort of realism when it came to this, uh, when it came to this show, despite what you may have seen tonight, Zach. But uh, he 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 went. Fu- he just bought one hundred percent into Ocean Life as a dolphin. He created this story uh, for all of uh, Splasha and her family amongst the coral reef. Just absolutely bizarre. He falls in love. How can we not uh, enjoy that? But we do get a scene, a very bizarre scene, where Dazzle says how he reveals how comfortable he is with his body to the point where he has Blade H. Tate uh, mounting him in a similar way to which Chrysalis was conceived. And, of course, Chrysalis is not having it. This this was... What made this episode even funnier uh, is the one of the comedic one of the basic rules of comedy is it's a down on their luck schlub who can never win and we've seen Chrysalis win before but in this episode everything was against her and it made all of her uh, all of her time being the straight person even funnier and amongst all of the madness that was going around <laughs> speaking of uh, Toto. Uh, Sorry, he he uh, finds any sort of excuse to run away with Splasha again, and we get this wonderful song. Uh, I don't know if it was by Nightclub or not, but uh, it looked like they they made the bands look the band kind of looked like Kenny Loggins' band from back in the day. It was it was a classic love song that we would see in any sort of an '80s movie, and it was actually, it was really pretty. It was really well well done, much like. All of the music in the show, which is, it's it's the '80s, so it's bizarrely haunting, and and also very very enjoyable. Uh, couldn't find it on short notice uh, for the just to hear it again, uh, but we do have word from nightclub band. This is a little bit of news. Don't need the sound cue. Don't worry. Uh, there's the official soundtrack to Moonbeam City will be out within the month, so probably the, by the time the next show break happens so, exactly we need we need this in our life this needs to be the new uh the new disney all of this celebrate give zach an easy show and he starts to go crazy which is great that's cr- actually that's not crazy you're actually rather sane, zach thank you uh but the compared to this show z- i'm downright intelligent you're you are the the smartest man compared to uh, the rest of this cast. Actually, no. The the women in the show ten are are the smartest people in the room, which is which is great. Um, and from both levels, um, below Daz with uh, Chrysalis as his assistant, co partner, uh, whatever, and uh, Pizzazz as the the police chief. Elizabeth Banks speaks with such conviction as this character that I can I can get lost in all of these characters. I. The only reason why I'm reminded that it's Elizabeth Banks is because it's in the credits. And same thing with Will Forte as Rad. He he completely falls into this character. And we saw more in this episode of his just antagonizing of Dazzle, no matter what. Whether it compromises a case, whether it's for his own uh, self-worth. He ends up building a an orca suit it, to capture Splasha for the dolphin races by a man named Howligan. He runs the professional uh, dolphin races, which are on the coast. Um, just seeing the robot suits and their mouths flap perfectly in timing with all of the voices was something that I won't be able to get out of my brain, and I'll have to watch it again just to make it even better. Um, this, of course, happens right after uh, Dazzle wanted to uh, copulate and... and, and <laughs> Pull out the dolphin penis, which was a phrase I never thought I would hear, hear this much on television, uh, let alone in my life. And uh, luckily, it was broken up by Rad in the orca suit, who lovelyly signed his name on the side of the orca in beautiful uh, neon pink. I mean, it's Rad. Uh, what else can he do? <laughs> and that, sure, I mean, that that was, I appreciate it. I appreciate that. That wasn't a joke, but I and thank you to everybody joining live. Remember, we do do this show live. I said do do. That's how low we've sunk. It's really hard talking and and not having anybody to talk with. This is my first solo show, and I think it's going swimmingly. Oh, I was expect. Never mind. Anyway, um, I'll take this moment actually while we're while there's a break in the action and I'm trying to uh, struggle with sanity to let you know that we are on iTunes and we are on YouTube if you are listening to the show on iTunes we do the show live on YouTube on our 
YouTube page, After Buzz TV. Just look for the Moonbeam City uh, playlist, and you will find all of our shows. The first two episodes were done in uh, one after show, and then episode three was its own after show, and now episode four is its own after show. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, if you want this audio on the go, you just go to iTunes, you look at Moonbeam City, and with that, you can take us without having to look at this uh, wonderful mug. I do have a pretty, pretty mug, if I do say so myself. Um, so, in terms of this episode, it it may we saw a deeper descent into Dazzle's madness, and Rad keep up with him in any means necessary. The most simple thing of doing a 15-minute CPR course, which we saw three different attempts at, Dazzle couldn't do it. Even when he had an opportunity to just sign the form, get it done with, even though he wasn't certified, was... He, he, he couldn't bring himself to do it. And as a result... Th this made Dazzle seem that much more dedicated. If if you put something in, in Dazzle's life that he catches on to, he will full-heartedly defend that, fight for that. Whether it's the right thing to do is never in question, as we saw with the Strike Visualizations artist uh, two weeks ago. But w you gotta wonder how far it can go, because with uh, silly comedies like this, um, even with Archer, like Archer is is based in realism, despite its uh, its kind of insanity. We even go to Sea Lab and and we visit uh, old Adult Swim concepts and go to space and and there buries a robot. But even that is based in some sort of reality. And and as we've mentioned on the show before, this. This show has the luxury of being in a fantasy world. The only thing that makes this real is the fact that they're humanoid and that there there are no aliens, at least not yet. Uh, this is I would put this like right in the middle of Rick and Morty on one spectrum and Archer on the other. They're both insane, but they're they're all dedicated to their truth. And the truth in this is Dazzle's willingness to uh, really do anything to get out of police work while calling it police work. Uh, Patrick Warburton, he... he to, to be fair, yo, Archer did have an alien last season. Fair, I mean, but th that was still within somewhat of a realm of reality. They That was testing the water where most of the season, because it's so realistic and takes place, and you know, the, the coke running and all of that, this isn't the Archer after show, but it's, for the most part, based in reality. So when the, uh, the unreal stuff happens, you at least have that basis where, and, and similarly in Rick and Morty, so it, where the opposite happens, where the unreal stuff happens all the time, but has that reality to it in how you would react in that situation. And with when those real situations come up about uh, your dad, like having your dad, your uh, step, not stepdad, having your father-in-law live with you and make all of these rules, uh, it, it's, it's, there's two different types of truth. Uh, and, and this is one that, we're, we may still be trying to find the truth, but Dazzle hasn't, he hasn't changed in a good way, you know? Like, he's staying, he's still the person that he was in the first episode, and it's all within the realm of believability for the character. Everything is grounded in its own world, and, and even though I just compared everything to itself, uh, it's not necessarily what... It, it, it's not necessarily what it seems, but because of everything being so crazy, th this being our reality, you can flip and believe it. We we just got off on a on a weird character tangent, but that's that's Dazzle. That's this show. Chrysalis and and Pizzazz are really the two only sane people that we've seen so far, uh, and all of the men are absolute just madness, especially uh, with Blade H Tate, uh, Chrysalis's father, uh, while trying to break Splasha out of the dolphin races. He has a pendant that he claims is a piece of the Bermuda Triangle, and when thrown into the water, it opens up a small portal, which would allow her to escape, throws it into the water, 
to be perfectly honest, I didn't know if that if that was actually going to happen or not. I didn't know if <laughs> if there was actually going to be a portal to the to the 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 Bermuda Triangle because it could have validated why he's so crazy and where maybe he's or rather maybe he's not crazy and all of this stuff stuff happened in reality um but something i did want to mention was uh something that i think that this world could use especially in the world of dolphin racing is a little a uh, little service called DraftKings. That's right. Uh, your season-long fantasy football team may be going strong, but you don't have to wait for the 16th week. Uh, when it comes to football, as opposed to dolphin races, uh, we can we can do this in in one week. You can join for one week. Get and even if like I'm not I'm not a big sports guy. I will say that, but I do like like your classic D&D, your RPGs, you look at people's stats and you determine what's the best team for you. So even if you are a nerdling like me, like I'm wearing a bloody shirt that's got a 8-bit baby wearing a shotgun, uh, I'm not into normal things. I'm Hell, hell I'm doing Moonbeam City. So uh, with DraftKings, it, all it takes is a week. Uh, it, it's it's a, the most universal role-playing game that you could find. Uh, this is DraftKings. All you need is you go to dra- you go to kings.com now, draftkings.com right now, excuse me, and use promo code BUZZ to play free for a shot at $1 million in this week's Millionaire Maker event. Uh, enter code BUZZ for free entry at draftkings.com. It's not Dolphin Races, but hell, it's football. Give it a shot. I could probably win five bucks if I wanted. That's the thing. With the free entry, no... There's no skin off your back. You can try. You can win because I know people who have won uh, a little and a lot from DraftKings. Give it a shot. DraftKings.com with the promo code BUZZ. And so with this quest for Aquatica, we've, we've learned a lot about the characters. We've learned that dolphin racing is a new sport that I didn't know I wanted to see on a regular basis. Uh, we learned that uh, uh, mechanized sea creatures is a is a way to traverse the sea that I never know I wanted to do until I saw this episode. I also learned that I might be going a little bit insane by how normal I'm finding the actions of our heroes. Uh, but uh, if there is one thing that is for sure, it's that Moonbeam City keeps surprising us week after week. And with uh, with this episode, we got a little bit of the the sex not as much of the violence that we uh that we're used to they're kind of like switching off now uh this, there wasn't really an extreme it was more of is it weird to say that this was kind of a pure love story <laughs> between a very 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 disillusioned man and a dolphin uh it, so with <laughs> oh and also we, we find all out, have our vices exactly and and uh dazzle's no different he bowling uh is definitely or not necessarily bowling but being a fan of strike visualizations as an art form and uh, uh falling in love with sea life so so easily despite gender because we do find out that splash is a dude and uh, uh rad ends up in russia he'll probably be back next week because we've gotten into that that run with this show and so I, I, to be perfectly honest, I have no idea what to expect for next week. All I know is that the show keeps making me laugh, and not it keeps making me not believe what I'm seeing. Would you agree with that, Zach? It it is bizarre in a way that I've never really seen on television before, and I say that as a, a big compliment. I think the the biggest thing I could say about it coming in just on this episode mm-hmm. is. Rob Lowe legitimizes the insanity <laughs> in in just like a, an un, in undefinable way. Like the the little back and forth with Halligan on the ship about the insult, about being articulate with his insult so that somebody could easily understand it is one of the silliest and stupidest things you'd ever hear. But Rob Lowe may, like I could see that an, in a major motion picture or on a or on a, a another show that Rob Lowe was on. It, it's just madness, but uh, at some point, 
the madness has to end. So I would like to thank everybody for tuning in to this quick recap of Quest for Aquatica on the AfterBuzz TV Moonbeam City After Show. Uh, if you like the show, make sure to leave us a comment. If there's uh, any guests that you would like us to get on the show, let us know. We're working on getting the creator, Scott Gardner, as well as uh, Nightclub Band. And we would love to get Rob Lowe, Elizabeth Banks, Will Forte, anybody, really. Uh, so do we, we'll do our part. You help us. You tweet at them. Let us know that we're here, and we would love to talk to them, and we're going to do the same. Uh, so uh, for Greg Goodness, who has been absent this evening, you go ahead and follow him on Twitter. Send him some well wishes. That uh, He is on Twitter at Greg Goodness, spelled exactly how you would imagine. And I am on Twitter at SoapboxMark. What about you, Zach? I'm on Twitter at that Zach Wilson. And hopefully we can get some input uh, in the future from you. Thank you for adding what little uh, what what little sanity you could to this insane journey that we were on. Uh, I'm but an insane person, but this was this this felt like home. This was just <laughs> insane enough. So come back next time. Feel like home with us for Zach, for Greg, for myself, for AfterBuzz TV. You can follow us all here at AfterBuzz TV on Twitter. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. You later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.